Based on the success of 2008's greatest masks of all time, this year we decided to have a look at the greatest jerseys of all time as we sifted through the archives of the Hockey Hall of Fame. Joined by Hall of Fame photographer Dave Sanford, we looked through over a thousand of the coolest sweaters you'll ever see. Some of the sweaters had been folded for years. I had to very carefully spread them apart because they were stuck together like the sleeves to the hip. And the crease marks were just totally imprinted on them. Yeah, because they hadn't them. been off the shelf in 20, 30 years until, until we started going through it all. So it was really cool to, to be sort of the first one in a, in a generation to take it off the shelf and look at it. Because the original six has the most history in the NHL, we thought it was very important to have two pages dedicated to each original six team because they have some, like, seriously, the coolest stuff out there. They phased out wool in the 1960s. So Montreal actually had the last wool sweater, 1969, and from that point on, it they became went in, jerseys. Yeah, jerseys, <laughs> synthetics, nylons. Doreen, I think, is the actual physical property that it's made of. I actually like the Rangers the best because Jimmy actually went upstairs to do a little bit of research. So I was working with Dave and I said, why don't we just use two Ranger jerseys? We'll cut the word in half, we'll put blue on the bottom right, white on the top left, and to me, it, to me it's the best one in the book and that's because Jimmy wasn't part of it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Brian. He's the guy with the white gloves, Phil Pritchard. Of course, yeah. <laughs> the Hockey Hall of Fame curator, purveyor of over 1,700 jerseys of distinction. One of Phil's favorite jerseys was the Atlantic City Seagulls from the late 1930s. I grew up watching these te teams too. I grew up in Calgary and the Cowboys had a team, so that cowboy hat jersey you see on the right, that was my personal favorite. They just reek of 1970s, don't they? And you can see in some of these images, Jamie had to separate the front from the back of the jerseys just to create some, some depth in it. And he really had to be careful not to create any more holes. And especially with the Victoria Cougars jersey, there's moth holes all over the place. And you, and you place a stick on it and you're worried about slivers from the stick catching its thread. And it was really painstaking going through it. There had to be hundreds of all-star sweaters and jerseys to choose from in the archive. And we tried to represent that with uh, a jersey from each era or various eras. There were so many different combinations. Wales versus Conference, East versus West, World International. Stars. Yeah. You put the three down on the ground, we lie them out, and then you do a fisheye on it. That might work. The early Oilers Gretzky jersey is iconic. People around the world, even if they don't know hockey, everybody knows Wayne Gretzky. When they think of Canada, they think of hockey. And that's why we had to have that in there. How many people remember the blue Team Canada jersey from 1978 World Juniors? And I watched that, but I still don't remember they wore blue. I guess you think of Canada, you think they wear red jerseys. You don't think of blue. The Seals were such a, a franchise that floundered for so many years. I think they only survived for five or six years and they never made the playoffs. We wanted to get them in, but they're, typically they, were, they didn't make the playoffs, they didn't make our team. If we wanted to go into the archives, that was the whole point of the magazine. We wanted to get the stuff that people haven't seen in years and years and years and may never see if it doesn't make it out on display. We had over 20 sweaters that didn't make the cut. We still have them, hopefully ready for Greatest Jerseys of All Time Part 2 in a few years. <laughs> <laughs>